Hello once again Jose Rodriguez back and I hope you enjoyed my previous video where I basically teased you about what's coming up with these photo speed paper batches that I received from the UK the other day and this should be a lot of fun so keep your eyes open for the subsequent set of videos that I'm going to be outputting it's going to be a lot of fun but today I received something else and it is from Rudy the person who created the holder for your CLI 42 cartridges. This thing is fantastic. I've been using it extremely regular and many people are already using that nice product. It gives you the ability to basically grow a third arm and allow you to perform refilling and even modification of those cartridges without having to use three arms. Okay, the thing will hold the cartridges for you. Now, this is a little bit different product. And this may be a little bit um, controversial, if you will, because we always recommend that you modify your cartridges. This is going to take us back maybe a decade and a half, because back in the day when we started receiving these CLI style cartridges, we were trying to come up with a way to refill them the way the factory would have. And that's basically, I believe, creating a pressure vacuum, pressure vacuum cycle. So. Rudy decided to go back in time and he developed a product and I'm going to show you what that is. It comes with the clip that will attach to your cartridge as well as the unit itself to allow you to insert or attach a syringe to perform this operation. Let's quickly take a look at this and I'm not going to do the refilling attempt today. I got to do a couple of dry runs myself to get used to the process because this is something entirely different to what we are used to doing. But let me show you what this looks like. So what you get in the box is 30 ml syringe such as this and I believe it's a lure type lock syringe and this unit. Now back in the day when somebody attempted to do this they were doing it rather crudely. And so the theory being that if you take one of these cartridges and you look at it unmodified, all you have is a vent at the top. That's the vent that you expose when you remove that little piece of tape before you install the brand new OEM cartridge onto your printer. And of course, the bottom is open. Now, how do you refill this? Well, there's only two options to the top. No, that's impossible. That's the air vent, the bottom. Now, how would you accomplish this? It's not going to be easy unless you perform this process a certain way. Now, theoretically, you're supposed to plug the vent and then force ink in, creating a positive pressure internally and then releasing that positive pressure by pulling back on your syringe and that creates a vacuum which then allows you to pump more ink in. Very similar to the Pro 1000 original system of refilling that we were implementing. Let's take a look at this first. We're going to remove this clip. Now this comes with some what appears to be foam gauze. I'm going to remove that and that will give us access to the clip. And the clip appears to have also been created by 3D printing. As you can see, it's got a lure lock port at the bottom. You have your silicone pad on top and a hole. And then you have this unit in here. This seems to be a tightening screw. This is what's going to seal right here. There's a piece of black rubber. This is what's going to seal against that vent, basically creating a, a completely sealed compartment. Basically, that cart will be sealed at the top and then you will attach your syringe to the bottom. Now, in order for this to even work, and this is what we were doing way back, you have to have a syringe because these cartridges hold a total of about 14 ml of ink. 14 to 15, okay? We've never really measured it. It has never actually been measured, but the reported is about 15 ml. Of course, you never use all the ink out of your sponge. 
So you're only really using about 11. But on a, on a cartridge that has a dried up sponge, we should be able to force in 15 ml or so. So you need a syringe of double capacity of what the ink volume would have been. So 15 times 2, 30. That's why he provides us with a 30 ml syringe. Now, you load 15 ml in the syringe with no air, okay? And then you attach your cartridge and insert it in position. Make sure that the port is facing up like so. So the cartridge now is installed against that port like so. You will then apply pressure against the vent and then perform the filling procedure, which I am going to have to read about, learn how to do it properly, and then proceed to demonstrate it on camera. If I can get it to work on two or three cartridges, I have plenty of raw unmodified cartridges to work with. And then we'll come back and do a live demonstration once I get good at this, because it may require a bit of practice for you to do this. Now, my question is, can you do this over and over and over again? Will somehow the sponge be affected by air or whatever? You know how it is when you actually refill using a drilled hole. You cannot just refill 50 times. At some point, you have to reflush the cartridge and sort of rejuvenate that sponge, remove all of the foam buildup that will continue to accumulate after refill, after refill, after refill. So that is one question that I don't know the answer to yet. Again, but if I can get, say, five to 10 refills out of that cartridge, I'm happy. I'm more than, more than happy. I didn't have to modify it. And I never tamper with the cartridges ink delivering hydraulics. If you look at an OEM untampered cartridge that still has ink in it, in other words, you've been printing with it, the upper portion of the sponge is white, snow white. Ink never saturated the upper portion of the sponge. That is the correct level of saturation. The bottom is saturated. Remember, the sponge is made out of two layers. The bottom layer is what delivers ink. The bottom layer is what receives ink from the liquid chamber. And of course, it wicks its way up to the top, all the way to the top if you modify your cartridge immediately. You have, you have changed the hydraulics. So if I can maintain that, then theoretically, I have maintained the level of ink flow or the reliable level of ink flow. Now, I will continue to use refillable cartridges, OEM cartridges that I have modified. I will continue to do that because it's just, just too easy for me to perform. Now, we'll have to compare both methods, and this will just be another option for those who don't want to use a modified cart. Now, I don't want to take away business from those of you who make some revenue selling modified cartridges. Again, this is simply another option. I cannot favor one over the other. You know me, I cannot be favoring this guy over that guy, but this is just another option that you may consider doing and experimenting with. Now, once I verify that this product works, I will put the link that was provided to me by Rudy on my list of links. And again, you can feel free to order one of these units. As I can tell, this took a lot of plastic to do this. This is not as simple as this little cartridge holder. And this, I believe, took eight hours to make. And it is nothing compared to this. So this might take maybe a whole day to produce one of these. So And, a, and obviously, a heck of a lot more plastic involved in the process. So again, this is... Like I said, and I keep stressing, just another option for you guys who are printing on Pro 9000s using CLI-8s or any of the others. I use CLI-8 cartridges or the Pro 100, of course, or even the new Pro 200. You should be able to then use regular cartridges from the Pro 100, swap the chip and refill it without having to modify it. Well, anyway. That's the theory behind this product. So thanks so much. We'll be back. We'll make this work one way or another. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. And of course, as always, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye. This is going to be a lot of fun.